Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another tutorial about Affinity Designer. Welcome again, in this tutorial we're going to take a look of all the differences and how to properly use the pencil tool and the brush tool. In the previous lesson we saw how the pen tool work and basically the pencil tool and the brush tool they have the same basic. They work the same, they're vector and you can control all your strokes with node. But the pencil tool and the brush tool, they give you more freedom and more option to have a sort of like more customized artsy experience in using Affinity Designer. Just for this video, I'm gonna use a graphic tablet. In my case, I have a Wacom tablet because these options, these tools comes with some specific options only from for tablet like for example the pressure control so we're gonna take a look on how it works also that thing I just created an empty document if you can see here in the layer in the layers tab I don't have any layers if I click on the pen pencil tool and I select the pencil tool of course I have kind of standard controls so I can control the uh, type of stroke the color I can use a uh, predefined swatches I can pick my color I can apply a gradient as well because it's all vector so it works greatly also in that way and I can also specify none if I need to trace something to have a reference or something I can trace it and have it sort of invisible so without any color for now I will leave it as a default on black and then I will define a width of for example eight points here I have the controller the controller gives gives us the ability to uh, change the weight the uh, thickness of the stroke that we're gonna draw based on some specific attributes some specific action that we're gonna do for now we're gonna leave it to none and I think by default it's set to none so we're gonna take a look later how to use it we're gonna do the same with the use field that it's a pretty amazing option that we're gonna take a look later as well so for now let's just simply draw a simple line and as you can see I'm just drawing drawing something and it's pretty inaccurate if I live and I click outside you will notice that automatically this line it's vector and Affinity Designer automatically applies by itself some vector points some control points that we can edit and we can remove even with the delete and the line is gonna continue by itself but we have full control on our stroke and we have full control on all the nodes and we have all the controls that we usually had in the previous lesson with the pen tool because of course we switch to the node tool and the pencil tool creates a vector uh, curve, a vector stroke and you will notice also that automatically uh, the software created for us a curve layer like this is pretty standard like there's nothing special we just draw a stroke and automatically the system converts the stroke into a vector stroke and apply specific points so there's nothing special about the cool things about this system is when we activate some specific options of this tool for example now let's switch the controller to velocity so you will notice that if i go slow even if I'm on width 8, the uh, stroke is really thin, it's like thinner than before, but I, I'm still at width 8 point. If I go faster, do you see how thick, it's way thicker than this one. So I can have variation of my stroke based on the velocity. And look what happens if I mix the two gestures. So I start slow and then I start increasing and I go faster and then I go slow again. There you go. The system automatically recognizes the velocity of our stroke and applies a different weight, a different thickness to the generated vector stroke. And this is pretty amazing. The controller gives us the ability also to have a sort of like brush default. If we use a brush and we define some specific option to a custom brush, having an automatic. So in automatic, the system will do whatever it wants. Basically, we don't uh, have control, but it's pretty random. It applies a different type of thickness uh, to a different, uh, different point or 
My favorite is setting up to pressure. So with a graphic table, the controller set to pressure is the best thing ever because now it's kind of difficult for you to see it, but if I press more on my tablet, I'm gonna have a thicker uh, stroke. If I press less or more delicate on the tablet with my pencil, the stroke is gonna be thinner. So I'm not gonna try to go faster, but now I'm pushing harder and see I'm not going faster, I'm the same speed and now I'm gonna try to stay lighter. Yes, there you go. So in this area, in the center area of my uh, stroke, while I was drawing the stroke, I pressed, I pushed more, I increased the strength of pressing of my tablet and the system automatically recognized the pressure point and increased the width of my stroke. The cooler thing about the pencil tool and the brush tool as well is that we can control this. It's not set in stone, it's not that we cannot do anything and if we want maybe a thicker stroke at the end and not in the middle we have to redraw it from scratch. We can fully control whatever we want with this line. So let's zoom a little bit. If we select the line you will notice here we have the uh, stroke options in the node tool. In the node tool if we open the stroke options we're gonna see that we can uh, of course change the width from the height point to beginning and automatically the system will readapt, will adapt the variation of thickness based on the new value that we select. But these options are pretty much standard. The cool thing is that we have these amazing bottom options in this panel called pressure and if we open we are gonna have a Bezier curve simulating or representing the actual pressure that we applied while designing, while creating the stroke. So if you notice here, if we move this on the side, we reopen the pressure palette, you notice that we start in a thinner line, then we increase the pressure and at the center we have a thicker line and then we went back to the bottom. Here we can control it completely, so we can totally change. For example, I want a thinner line at the bottom, at the center, and a thicker line at the beginning and at the end. And of course we can delete by simply selecting the node and hitting cancel or delete on your keyboard. And look at that, I inverted the stroke, I inverted the thickness of the stroke, but just by simply controlling this curve. And of course I can reset it completely or I can create it by my own after I drew the stroke. So I can create new nodes and to create new nodes you can just click on the single, on the stroke. You don't have to do any weird combination and of course delete to remove it. But this pressure panel gives us the ability to fully control the thickness, the thickness variation of our stroke with both the pencil tool and the brush tool and this is pretty amazing. Selecting the brush tool, basically we have almost the same option, if I could say the same exact options of the pencil tool is we have a specific width, we control the color, we can control whatever type of control we want to apply to, pressure, velocity, automatic and so on, but here we have have a couple of more options because the brush tool gives us the ability to apply a specific texture to the brush in the pixel persona. But we're gonna take a look at this later while we're gonna create more complex stuff. For now just consider the brush tool like a more complete version of the pencil tool if you're planning to apply some specific texture or you're planning to do some pixel art to the brush tool. And with the brush tool we also have as well the blending modes that are typical from Photoshop and there are a lot of blending modes. So if for example we create, I don't know, a red and we go on top. Of course nothing happens because we left the blend mode by default, but if we change the blend mode for example to add and we draw it, look what happens. Here we have an addition and here we can apply maybe a multiply, oh, not a color burn, a multiply so we can go on top of the red as well. And it's amazing and of course we can control also the opacity of our stroke and having a uh, more simulated pixel stroke. Of course these options that we selected from the brush tool are not lost, like if we want to edit it are automatically applied 
to the layer that the system applied, that the system generated. So we have the layer curve with the opacity we, that we set with the blending mode that we previously set. So this one is multiply, the other one we set it to add, so it's set to add and we can change it. That's the power of vector stuff or a separate the layer or whatever you want to call it. We have full control on everything even after we did it. We want encountered the case that we do something we cannot revert back and we don't have control anymore on those stuff. The other options that I want to show you is the use fill of the pencil tool. The use fill is pretty amazing if you want to do uh, quick sketches or you're maybe a sketch artist or a concept artist that has to do some super quick st stuff. So basically the fill tool will automatically fill the space in between your vertex. So if I create this line, look what happened. It's filling completely whatever inside. Even if the shape is not closed, it's creating a fill option. And the filling is completely controllable from the color palette because we have, of course, stroke and fill. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes to check the support me page on my website where you can find all different methods and ways to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And I talk to you in the next lesson.